you probably can, can fit down in one knot. Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's Cece from CC Restyle. And today we're working on this Bombay chest. If you recall, or if you happen to see, uh, I believe it was last Friday maybe, that um, we took this plain fronted Bombay chest and we added, um, we added the would you bin molds to the front. See that little frame sort of shape? And we also added, um, I also added some after the live, I added some down the sides here. So it was completely plain fronted, um, nothing, it was just, just plain. It was, had a pretty shape though, so that's what drew me to this piece. And then I just immediately saw this frame um, shape around it and I knew I wanted to create that with would you bin moldings. So that's what I did. And um, if you want to see that live, you can go to my video section and go back to last Friday and see how we applied those. And then after the live, like I said, I, I applied these down the side um, because it just needed a little, little something, something, and I wasn't, this just wasn't quite enough, so I needed to add some more. And you probably can't see them very well because of the, because they're painted um, buttercream right now, but there's some keyhole moldings I added on there. They are straight, they look crooked because of the curve of the piece on the video, but they're straight. Um, so, I went ahead and I did my first coat. I did sea glass all over um, the body and then highlighted towards the center in buttercream. And both of those colors are chalk mineral paint from Dixie Belle Paint Company. Um, so, on my second coat, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to apply my sea glass and my buttercream and blend that. And then I've got some pink champagne and some antebellum blue that I'm gonna blend in in some certain spots. But I'm gonna do that on the second coat so you don't see antebellum blue and pink champagne here. If you're hopping on, say hello. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get cracking. Make sure my camera here is gonna stay, my tripod. There we go. Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm super excited and I, yeah, I kinda like it as it is, but I'm not done still. Um, I'm not gonna stop till the fat lady sings and the fat lady has not sung yet. Um, but here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do the drawers first and then I'm gonna take those out and do the body. But I like to do them this way when I'm blending so I can see what they're gonna look like, you know, in the whole piece and where I want what colors to be and all that. So. Like I said, I've got um, <clears throat> sea glass and buttercream. Um, those are the two colors that I've used so far, really pretty. And I was actually inspired by one of the color palettes that somebody commented on the post when I asked what color should I paint this. Somebody posted some similar colors to this, maybe a little darker, but some similar colors. And um, I'm going to do some flowers in the center, I'm not sure exactly how, if I'm just gonna do one corner, or just the bottom, or two corners, I don't know yet, but I'm gonna do those in um, like blush and maroon flowers, blush blush and maroon kind of colors to warm this up a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with my um, top draw, and I'm gonna work in small sections at a time. I have got my brushes here. I'm using for the sea glass and the buttercream, I'm using my flat medium synthetic brushes from Dixie Belle, my favorites right now. Um, and then um, for the blending, I'm going to be using the Bell brush from Dixie Belle. It's just a little round natural bristle brush. I've got my um, continuous spray mister bottle because you need to keep your paint a little bit wet while you um, are blending. And then I've got a little flat brush, a flat um, small flat um, brush, synthetic brush from Dixie Belle that I'm going to be using for antebellum blue because I'm just doing it in little corners and sh you know kind of creating shadows with the antebellum blue so that's why I got a little small flat brush. It'll be perfect and of course some shop towels because we need shop towels you know um, for drips and spills and wiping off our brush in between um, strokes when we're blending. So I'm going to get on at it. I'm going to start with Sea glass. Um, oh, you know what? I need a brush for my pink champagne real quick. Oh, what do I got? I got another flat medium for pink champagne. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side and I'm gonna go over my 
second, my first coat of sea glass, I'm gonna go over it with a second coat of sea glass. And I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of painting outside of the frame with the sea glass. And I'm just gonna do about this size section at a time um, so it doesn't dry up on me. Oops, that might've been a little bit much paint. And then I'm giving it a little mist of water just to keep it wet and workable. And um, I'm bringing it right up to my moldings here. Um, it's gonna overlap with the buttercream just a little and that's okay. So I'm getting, I'm going up onto my moldings but not completely painting the moldings, if that makes sense. Um, so when I do my buttercream, I'm gonna overlap on the moldings so that that is where my blend is gonna happen, right on those molds. Give it a little mist of water and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my buttercream. And I'm just gonna start halfway through. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint the center. Mist that with some water. So I'm painting my center, give it a little mist. And now I'm gonna go back over and um, kind of make sure I get all the details on my moldings because you don't wanna miss a detail. Like on the second coat, I'm seeing some spots that I missed and I'm glad I'm going over it a second time so I can get those spots. And I'm just kind of pouncing around those details. That's a really good way to get down in there and make sure you're getting all the spots. Um, not missing any spots or little crevices because nothing is worse than finishing up a product a project and then you go back and look at it and you have this one little spot inside of a you know carving or whatever that um, has no paint and it's like gosh now I can get out my touch up paint and then seal it and all that stuff. Um, so I'm going to grab my bell brush and I'm just going to go ahead and start kind of pouncing or circular motions over my details to get those paints to start, those two colors to start um, blending together. And my brush is shedding a little bit, so that's cool. You know, everybody loves a shedding brush, right? Ooh, this one's shedding kind of bad. I guess <laughs> it's brand new, so <laughs> whoops, whoops. So I'm just gonna um, kind of follow along the lines of my frame to blend my two colors together right on top of those details. Blending on details is super easy. It kind of sounds like it could be really tricky and difficult, but it's actually easier than just straight up blending on a flat surface, in my opinion. It's much more forgiving. So we're just kind of going around and blending around those details, picking out all our hairs from our brand new brush. That's awesome. I like to wipe off my brush as I'm blending because I don't like to be pushing around any excess yucky paint muddying up my blend, so. Um, oh, there's another hair. Gosh, you know what? I need somebody to follow right behind me and pick all these hairs out. Um, on that note, when you get brand new brushes, I highly suggest that you condition them. Um, to condition your brushes, when you get new brushes, all you gotta do is give them a really good, rough wash with some brush soap or whatever you use to clean your brushes, and that is the best way that I know of to condition them. Um, let's see, see if there's any questions real quick. Hi everybody, hello, hello, hello. Yes, I'm super excited about this piece. Um, I am very excited. <laughs> My fat lady takes a lot to get her singing. <laughs> yes, it does. It sure does, I agree with that 100%. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Actually, um, that's not true, I'm not done. I'm gonna throw in some antebellum blue on this side, I forgot. You guys almost let me forget about the antebellum blue. So antebellum blue, beaut, 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 beaut. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my sea glass one more time and I'm just gonna kinda of go right back over where I went a little bit because I want that to be wet. I might have talked too much and let it dry up a little bit too much. So I'm gonna give that some water. Just a little spritz of water. Just kind of go over what I went over real quick. Cause this is the area where I want my antebellum blue. So 
I've got my little flat small, flat small, and I'm just gonna get a little bit of antebellum glue on the tip. I don't need a whole lot to start with because I can always add more if I want. And I'm just gonna kind of shadow right here. Just create a shadow with my antebellum glue, right? Just like that, okay? And then wipe off my brush and then get, I'm gonna get a little bit more antebellum blue and just add a little bit more in a corner. Darken that up just a little bit. Darken it up just a tad. And now I can go ahead and grab my other brand new bell brush that's probably gonna shed on me. And I'm just gonna gently kind of blend that in with my sea glass. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna wipe, wipe off my brush real quick and continue just to blend the blend away. Blend the blend away. And that, my friends, is I think the extent of our antebellum blue. What do you think? Should I darken it up a little bit or is it good? I'm gonna add just a little bit more coming up here, coming up over here. Just a little bit. Extend that out just a little bit and blend it back in. Wiping off my brush. And I can even kind of follow the curves of my frame here that I created. What do you think? Antebellum blue for the win, am I right? Always, always antebellum blue for the win. This is one of the best colors, I'm telling you what. It's like always appropriate. All right, so I'm gonna stop before I um, regret not stopping. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do that. Isn't that perfect? Just a little perfect amount of antebellum blue? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So we're gonna move right on over here, do the same thing we just did on the other side but then we're going to add in some pink champagne in the center when we're done so I'm going to go over my sea glass with my second coat of sea glass I love this color and it goes so good with the antebellum blue I used sea glass and antebellum blue on a vanity with some in the navy and it was uh, the color combination was just perfection it's a good color combination but then again I like blues but I like all colors, so I am I do not discriminate. I like all the colors. All colors have their place, you know. Just um, sometimes that place is not on my furniture, but you know, they do have their place. Alright, sea glass, a little misty mist of water, kind of overlapping. Um, or I'm going on top of my moldings just a little bit because we're gonna overlap that buttercream. Misting it to keep it wet. All right, so now I think it's time for some buttercream. Go ahead and paint right in the center here. And then we'll just bring that out towards the edges of our, or towards our frame. And once we got the center all filled in, now we can go ahead and just kind of pounce our buttercream onto our um, the rest of our moldings that are not covered in sea glass. If you start to build up too much sea glass on your buttercream brush, you can just wipe it off with the shop towel. That's what the shop towels are for. That's why I grab them. So make sure I got in all my details. I want to look at it from different angles and see I missed a spot. When you're working with these kinds of details like moldings or carvings, you want to make sure you're looking at looking at um, looking at your paint job from all angles, because that is how you um, that's how you avoid missing spots is by looking at it from different angles. So we're gonna take our shetty brush here, shetty brush. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's shedding on me. That's what I get for not conditioning it. Wah, wah. That's all right. I'll just pick all the hairs off here in a second. So we're just going to go through and blend, blend the sea glass and the buttercream together right on top of these moldings. Okay. Then I'm going to spin about, oh, this brush. I can't do this brush here. Um, I can't do this brush. It's gonna, I'm going to spend more time picking out hairs than I am anything else. Boo. All right, let me 
grab a different blendy blend brush. Mm. Okay, so instead of the bell, because it is shedding way too much, or at least that one is, I got this other one, but I'm using that one for Antebellum Blue. Um, this one seems to be fine, not shedding as much. So I'm going to use my um, oval, is this a sm oh, bleh. oval small, small oval to, um, first I'm going to pick all my hairs out with my oval small. What a bummer, man. I don't mind a hair or two every once in a while, but this many is a little cray cray. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and give it another mist of water while I'm picking out those hairs. Keep it wet, keep it wet. A few more to go. Oh my gosh, what a bummer. Wow, okay, well that was kind of an ungodly amount. All right, so I'm gonna continue blending with my oval small oval, which is a first for me. I have actually never blended with a small oval before. But um, if you get the technique of blending and whatever technique works for you, you can pretty much blend with any brush. Some brushes make it easier to blend and some a little more difficult, but if you got the technique down, you can use a chip brush, you know, or freaking any kind of brush, and you can blend. So we're just gonna, there, that's fine. That works for me. That works for me. Okay, so now we're gonna add just a little more sea glass because again, I was probably talking too much. Talking too much, not painting enough. So there we go. A little more sea glass. And now we're gonna add our antebellum blue just like we did on the other side. Okay, and a little bit more because why not? And then we'll go ahead and blend that in with our oval small. Yes, ma'am. All right, so just again, we're kind of following the lines of our frame, just like we did on the other side. And I might need to darken that up just a little bit because the other side is darker. Does it look darker on one side to you? Yeah, it does. We'll go ahead and just darken that up a little bit. No big deal. And just blend it in gently. Blend it in gently. All right, cool. What do we think? Very dreamy makes it, right? That um, addition of the antebellum blue just makes it very dreamy. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this drawer so we can work on it. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add my pink champagne right down the middle. So, um, let's see, give it a little mist of water. And I've got my pink champagne, which is this very super light pink color, almost white. And my flat brush, my flat medium. And I'm just going to come in right through the center with my pink champagne just like that, and since it's so light, almost white, just like the buttercream, it, it'll basically blend in itself. I probably won't even have to do any actual blending with a, a separate brush <coughs> because it's so um, similar. And very subtle, that's what I'm going for with this color. I wanted to add in some super subtle blush pink somehow, and um, I'm gonna do that obviously with the transfers, but with the um, backgrounding this pink champagne, it'll look really, really, really nice, I think. All right, so that's it for our pink champagne. Can you see that? How it's just adding a little touch of blush. It's kind of hard to see in the reflection, I know, I'm sorry, but when it dries, you'll be able to see it a little bit more, I think. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the bottom draw. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. And we'll do the same thing as we did on the top, basically just kind of upside down. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, I didn't see any 
questions, but do let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> Infested Louisiana, huh? All right, well, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get to getting on the bottom draws. So I'm gonna go around on my second coat with the sea glass and pull that out just a little bit more. And just start to paint and start to paint in that second coat in the sea glass. Add a little bit of water from my Mr. Bottle. And I'm basically with the sea glass, in case you're just hopping on or you missed earlier, well, I'm basically just kind of framing in. I'm framing the frame basically with the sea glass is what I'm doing. So I'm going right around the frame that I created with the sea glass. And we'll stop here because I'm only doing half at a time, half, half of a um, drawer at a time. Just makes it easier to blend that way, that way your paint's not drying up on you. Um, give it a little mist of water. Okay, so now I'm gonna go grab my buttercream, which I am running out of, and go ahead and get here through the middle. Give it a little mist of water, makes it go a little further and avoids brush strokes when I um, mist it with water. So not only does it keep it wet, for me to blend. Um, it makes your paint go a lot further when you um, mist with water. And also, um, it helps to avoid brush strokes because your paint's not drying up on you as fast. So when it's more, when it's wetter and more workable longer, you can uh, minimize those brush strokes, which I know is kind of a big deal. A lot of people just cannot stand brush strokes. They don't mind, they don't bother me so much. I kind of like it because it makes it look hand painted, but but a lot of people don't don't like brush strokes, and that's totally understandable. Um, so to minimize those, um, it helps to you know mist your paint with water. Dixie Belle in itself is a self-leveling paint, so um, by itself, it's pretty good at, at not leaving brush strokes. But um, by chance, it's drying up quick on you, and it leaves brush strokes. Mist with water. In between coats, you can sand with a fine grit um, sandpaper, like maybe like a thousand. Try that and um, get rid of those brush strokes. So now I've got my oval, um, oh my oval medium. Let's see, and I'm just gonna go right over those details. Kind of do some circling motions right on top of those details where the colors meet to get those colors blending together. And wipe off my brush to get rid of that funky, nasty extra paint we don't need. And then I'm just gonna kind of follow the frame and clean up my brush strokes. There, see? See that, see that? So now I'm gonna grab my antebellum blue and do what we did on the top and just do a little kind of V shape here in the corner. Little kind of just shadow. That's how you wanna think of it, it's just like a shadow. And then I'm gonna grab my blendy blendy brush again. Actually, I was using this other um, bell brush for that and it didn't seem to be shedding as much. So this one's not shedding quite as much as the other one. So. We'll keep using it for our antebellum blue. All right, so there we go. Cool, I love how that is blending. Love it, love it, love it. Um, wipe off my blending brush. And I'm gonna add a little bit more antebellum blue. I'm gonna darken that up just a tad. Okay, so. Blend it in real gently. Just kind of going back and forth in the same spot. We'll get the colors to start blending. And then you can move your brush around to, you know, kind of carry that fade out. Move or fade around a little bit so it blends where you want it to. Cool. So that is our bottom corner. So I'll go ahead and do um, the other 
corner and then I will hop off here and I'm gonna get the body of this thing done and then we'll see about transfers I'm not sure I, I know I want to do some burgundy maroon and blush colored flowers um, but I just got to pick out which which transfers I'm gonna use for that so um, let me go ahead and get to this side I'm going to go ahead and get my sea glass back out and we'll just go right over our first coat. And we got to do our uh, pink champagne blend through the center of this. So don't want to forget that this time. I'm forgetful people, I will forget. Then it'll be all dry and I'll be like, how come you let me forget? Ah! Alright, so we're getting sea glass. Rocking and rolling on our details here, making sure I'm pouncing into all the crevices of my details to make sure I get all those spots. I'm gonna make sure you get all the spots. Get all the spots, okay. Give that a little spritz, a little mist, and then my buttercream. We'll just come right here and pick up where we left off on this side with the buttercream, which is right about here. Give it a little mist, kind of make my paint go a little further. My buttercream, well, like all most neutrals in general from Dixie Belle are pretty thick. Um, I know like buttercream, driftwood is super duper thick, sandbar is super thick, so those are the ones you definitely want to be misting with water because those will, will leave brush strokes because they dry up so quick because they're so thick. Um, and it'll also, you know, misting with water will help you, help stretch your paint quite a bit further with those thick paints as well. All right, so I'm going to bring my buttercream down here on my details. And just kind of overlapping my sea glass just a little bit. Okay, so I think make sure I didn't miss any spots on my trims, which looks like I did miss a little spot right here. See, you gotta look at it from all angles. You have to, or you will miss a spot, I promise you that. Okay. Now with our bell brush, or I'm sorry, our oval, oval medium is what we're using now since our bell brush kind of was losing its hair. We're just gonna kind of go over our details just to get those sea glass and that buttercream to blend together. And then I'm gonna wipe, wipe that extra paint off my brush, get it off there, and then I'm just gonna Clean up my brush strokes and follow around my, you know, my fade line or my um, blend line or whatever you want to call it where they're blending. Clean up my strokes, get it to where I like it. And I'm thinking that looks pretty, pretty close. And then I'm going to stop because when I keep going, I'll regret it. So. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a little spurt, spritz of water, and I'm gonna add my antebellum blue, just like we did on the other three side corners, other three corners. All right, and then we will use our other bell brush, the non jetty one, to blend, we blend that right in. People always say, you guys make this look so easy, and I'm telling you, it's because it is. You just gotta go slow and take your time. I mean, just because you have to, you know, in essence, you're working fairly quickly so the paint doesn't dry up on you, but, but you don't have to work fast, as in you can take your time with your strokes, you know, and get your blend the way you want it. You don't have to work super, super fast. So I almost got this one down. Okay, cool. So that
that be our bottom drawer? Well, I gotta do the pink champagne. You almost let me forget the pink champagne. All right, and then, hi everybody. I'm almost done here. I'm wrapping up the drawers and then I'll paint the body. Um, <laughs> I know, I, I talk to fill the silence because I might get a little bit nervous, so I talk. Get a little spritz and grab my pink champagne somewhere. Pink champagne brush here. And I'm just gonna go right through the center. And just like on the top, since the colors are so similar, um, I don't even think I have to use a blending brush to blend these. I can just kind of slap it on and, you know, kind of work it in just like this. And it will blend in with the buttercream all on its own. And I'm gonna, however, give it another mist. It's getting a little thick, which means it's drying up really quickly, which means it's gonna leave some big fat brush strokes. So give it a little mist. All right, so that is the pink champagne. I'm trying to decide if I wanna give it one more little pass of pink champagne. Eh, why not? I'm gonna wipe my brush off and give it a little bit more pink champagne. A little bit more, just a little bit more. And all right, cool. So that is our sea glass antebellum blue buttercream pink champagne blend. Now all I've got to do is. Um, the body of the piece, and that's going to be pretty simple. Um, on the body, I'm going to do my sea glass to antebellum, um, just like I did on the front. So right there on the sides, I'm going to do it just like I did the front, but without the pink champagne. And then um, with the antebellum blue, I'm going to carry that onto these corners here. So these corner pillars of the piece, I'm just going to um, kind of carry that down right here. Just a little bit, just a touch, not too much. I don't want to darken this piece up a whole lot, but I do want to add some of that, you know, pretty dark tealish blue in there. So, hence the antebellum. So, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. I am thankful that you tuned in to watch me blend the second coat on this piece, and I'm super excited to see how it turns out. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of sad I don't want to be done with it because um, it's a lot of fun. But at the same time, I'm not going to drag it out because I am still excited to get it done. So um, I hope you all have a great week and are having a good Monday. I will see you later. Bye.